Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Farmington Zoning Board. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to introduce the Zoning Board of Appeals members. Um, this is microphone. Jay Town staff, then Director of Development, Daniel Puri, Code Officer, and our Clerk of the Board, Paula. This meeting will be conducted in accordance to the rules and procedure of the Zoning Board of Appeals adopted January 22nd, 2024. Yeah. Our emergency exits are the one that you came into and one to your guys' right. There was no legal notices published for tonight's agenda, ZB0301-24, Fowler Family Trust, and ZB03. Thank you. We approve the minutes from March 25th, 2024. Second. 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 Aye. 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 Now, there was no legal notice published for tonight's agenda. ZB 0301-24, Fowler Family Trust. ZB 0302-24, Kevin Van Epps. Brickwood Management, ZB0302 through ZB0307-27 until crossing LLC. As these public hearings were all continued to tonight's meeting from the March 25th, 2024 meeting. There also is no new application for tonight's meeting that would have otherwise required public posting of the report thereof. So we'll continue our first applicant. And that's ZB0301-24, Fowler Family Trust, 6176 Hunter Drive, Farmington, New York, 14425. The applicant is requesting an area variance to the provisions contained within Chapter 165, Schedule 1, Attachment 1 of the Farmington Town Code. The applicant wishes to create a third lot that would have a minimum lot width of 22 feet. The town Code requires a minimum lot width of 125 feet. The proposed lot would be part of the proposed use subdivision lot number R5-A, the tax ID number 29.13-1-5.100. Okay. Lot R5-B with a tax ID 29.13-1-5.200 of the Pheasant Crossing Subdivision. These three proposed lots will be located along the west side of Pheasant Crossing and within the Pheasant Crossing Subdivision Tract. All lots are zoned RS-25, Residential Spur. So we continue that one. So we're gonna move this here. Online. No. I think you have chair and up there, but good evening. Uh, Jared Hurt with Evans Fox on behalf of the applicant Fowler Family Trust. Uh, I apologize, I'm having a hard time hearing uh, the speaker virtually. Um, is that better? Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're on tonight. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at the proposed resolution. As you, as the board is well aware, we are currently before the planning board. They have adjourned it out for a continuation of the public hearing because there was a request for Mr. Brand 
for uh, further soils testing and analysis to be done. We have indicated that we are certainly amenable to providing what's been requested and we're in the process of doing so. Um, so I have no objection to the proposed resolution, which essentially is adjourning this out to May's meeting uh, with the continuation of the public hearing occurring, which will allow the planning board an opportunity to receive the requested information and to ultimately make a determination under Steger. Okay. Anyone else in the room? No? Do you have comments? No. No comments? Okay. Anything from the general public online or in the room? No? The board members? No? Okay. So we do have the draft resolution given to us for adjournment and continuation of the public hearing upon the request of the area of Orange for proposed lot R5-C for Fowler Family Trust and Resubdivision. Can I get a motion? I know. So I'm going to make a motion to accept the draft. Do you have a second? Right, so Todd. All right, roll call vote. Sorry. Jody? Aye. 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 All right. It is continued. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, ZB0302-24, Evans Van Epps. Brickwood Management, 25 Silver Light Way, Rochester, New York. The applicant is requesting an area variance to the provisions contained within Chapter 165, Article 6, Section 79-G-1 of the Farmington Town Code. The town of Farmington has requested Pintail Crossing to become a town dedicated road, creating the need for an area variance for the proposed front setback, 22 feet for the proposed building. The town code requires a minimum front setback of 70 feet. The property is located on the north side of Pintail Cross and west of Red Fern Drive in a zoned residential multiple family. Good evening, uh, Ed Tomlinson, Marathon Engineering. Also got Evan Benayops uh, representing the ownership or developer and then Griffin from Conifer to uh, represent for the further variances that are later in your agenda as well. Um, I can speak to both all at once since it's a single project, if the board's okay with that, just to explain the full uh, project of all the variances that we're looking to request, both for lot 1B and 1A here, or I can split them up, whatever the board prefers. Staff, I think. I, I would say, give an overview of, of what all the variances are that are needed. But don't forget that the planning board granted preliminary uh, on the conditions that those variances are granted by this board. So if I skip one, I'm sure Ron and Dan will trade me out. So uh, what we are here today, uh, I know we were tabled previously, and that was really to allow the secret coordination uh, to happen, which, as Ron mentioned, we were at the planning board for preliminary subdivision by approvals uh, last week. And so, uh, Pintail Crossing um, is this overall project. It was originally designed and approved in two phases. Uh, going back around 2018, our office was the engineer for that project as well. And what you see in the green here, was phase one of that project that Conifer developed with eight plexus being a mix of one, two, and three bedroom buildings. And then phase two would have been the brown or the orange um, that was approved by the planning board, but never constructed because it didn't uh, receive financing to tax credit uh, finance or HCR for approval. So uh, Evan and his group is looking to uh, purchase the Western portion being phase two of Pindale and turn it into Creekwood phase two with the extension of the townhouses that they recently 
completed constructing on Redfern Drive back into this on the project east side. And uh, as part of our discussion with town staff relative to uh, the change from eight plexes, which are multi-story flat apartment style to townhouse development for this portion, uh, the town requested that the ownership and developer explore granting uh, dedication of the road where what's in blue here uh, is primarily private roadway and was designed as such with an emergency gate at the end of Running Brook Road to allow for emergency vehicles. Uh, the request was for that to be dedicated and become a town-owned and maintained road. So that changed some things and that's why we're here today. The original configuration because uh, the front setback is really only off of a dedicated or a town owned road for the 70 foot front setback that's required. We could have constructed these 40 townhomes without any variances, um, just like the original plan was designed without any variances. But because we now will have a town dedicated road through the middle, that creates a 70 foot wide on each side of the right of way front setback that needs to be um, complied with or obtain variance from this board. So that's why we're here tonight specific to uh, the second phase or the townhouse portion of this. What was advertised was the least relief or the greatest relief required for building E going 22 feet off of the right of way. One of the reasons that we have it that close is we have uh, attempted to match the front setback that is to the Running Brook neighborhood. A lot of those homes in those garages are very similar uh, setback from the right of way to those. They're in a different zoning district. Um, we have a greater zoning requirement, but from a neighborhood standpoint or what it looks like coming down that road, it's going to look extremely similar. One of the other reasons is we wanted to minimize the amount of variances needed on that parcel. If we would have pushed that building back or north further specific to building E, that would have required a rear variance because there's a 40 foot setback. I don't know if you can see on the board, but there's a very skinny uh, rectangle, if you will, where that leg north of the roadway as it goes over towards Running Brook Road. So we've tried to strike a balance between the neighborhood character and minimizing the amount of variances. So the development for the Creekwood portion, which is in the orange, Buildings A, B, B, and E all are less than the 70 feet from the proposed right of way, but the smallest setback, if you will, is building E, which is what is noticed at the 22 feet. Uh, so we, we uh, vary from 22 feet to 40 feet, depending on where the various buildings are, are sized in there. And then for the green, uh, because we are dedicating that, all those buildings are built. There's no proposed improvements to do any of what's built out there today on the section one of Pintail. But because, again, we're dedicating the roads and creating a right of way, there are many of the buildings that don't comply with the landscape buffer to parking, setbacks both side and front. Uh, for the proposed parcel configuration, all of those that we've are outlined in uh, what was advertised for that one. So uh, we have been working quite diligently with staff to work through. Uh, this is a little bit of a, a complicated just because it wasn't uh, contemplated to dedicate this road when we first started looking at this site seven, eight years ago uh, with town staff. But again, it's something that the town has a desire to provide secondary access into the neighborhood. I understand there's some capital improvements to one of the bridges on one of the roads, so this will help alleviate that in the future. And uh, I, we think it's a win-win, assuming we can get through the variance process to go to site plan approval, just from a long-term maintenance standpoint from the ownership, as well as the benefit to the town. Um, so with that, I'll open it up to questions. I'm sure there's some things that may not be clear to the board. Okay, so you essentially talked and blocked them all together. So we can go through. I don't have to read them. I can say each one if anyone has a question to each one. Wait, God, no, please. Okay. They, they, they've had the resolutions. We don't need to sit here tonight and go through them word by word. 
Okay, so the first thing I thought was staff comments. Well, first of all, the 70 foot setback is an old section of the code. If you think of 70 foot, you think of a highway where the speed is 55, 60 miles an hour or greater. The setback on 332, for example, is 100 feet. Uh, the setback on a town road where you're not traveling 55, 60 miles an hour if you're slow um, is quite ex excessive, okay? And I think that, that this section of the code needs updating but my my take on it is that you're at, you're being asked to grant a variance, the minimum relief being 22 feet for building E. And I think that you probably should modify that condition to specify the other setbacks that uh, the applicant has identified here tonight. Or buildings A, B, and D. D is in dog, um, so that there is no confusion when it gets to the um, planning board for their review and approval. It's just next month. Is there any question on on modifying that? Does anybody yeah, just elaborate on that again? Yeah. So that would be resolution. Uh, two. Right. Yep. Three three. Three. Yep. That's that's only for the Evan Van Epps side of it. Mm -hmm. Um, the greatest resolution or setback reduction is down to twenty two feet. It doesn't call out exactly the other buildings that would also be shorter than the normal set feet. setback. So Ron's suggesting that we have verbiage in there to just make it very clear what. A, B, D, and E are so that there's no confusion. The resolution was only to just reduce it down to 22 feet, which I think you should call out what the other buildings are just so that's in there. So there's no question about what you guys are allowed. What about building C? Building C doesn't have any problem far enough back because it, the loop of road, I, and I neglected to mention it's a great question. That's a private drive okay. up of there, so there's no 70 foot setback required. For okay. that. And uh, just to clarify for the board, so building E, as mentioned, that's the smallest front setback that we're asking, but uh, and we don't have an issue with specifically numerically identifying the other ones just so that the planning board clearly understands what this board. Uh, granted. So for building um, B, as in void, 26 feet is what's proposed on the plan that we submitted to you. And that would keep uh, any question about us being able to slide it up to the 22 feet that would be granted. Building A, which is on the south side, is 28 feet. And building D on the north side in between C and D is 40 feet. So if we wanted to add specific numbers for each of those buildings to the resolution, we would not have an issue. Building C, you said. That stays the way it is. Building C is not. So I need that. Yeah, correct. Thank you. So do you guys understand? Mm -hmm. yeah, so Some reason. Yeah, I do. Okay. Record. Oh, anything else from you, Ron? Or... No, I, 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 the planning board is waiting to hear what conditions you put on it. Uh, one of the conditions that we asked to be put on the site plan and final sub subdivision drawings is the fact that these variances were granted for each of these buildings to have this setback so that they know when it comes to them they can look at the map and see that building A has a setback of 28 feet. Yep, that's what they agreed to. We're good to go. And I believe the planning board, even though we're not at site plan, just that subdivision, we did submit the site plan so they understood where we're headed right. and what we're asking this board for. I believe they've written a, a letter of recommendation as well. 
Yeah, so I was just going to bring that up. There is a letter that was forwarded to your board from the planning board of support for the design, the design of the project. Now keep in mind that the right away width <clears throat> is 70 feet. That the setback from the right away width is 70 feet. So if you take half of the right away width, that's 35 feet, and you add the 22 feet from it, you're 57 feet back from the edge of the travel lane. Yeah, I think we're at 60 foot right away for this section, Ron. What so is this like, Yeah, it's like Okay, correct. Yep. I also went out there today. I know we're talking about the first one for the Venep side of the project, but for the Pintail side of it, uh, which is the current road. It's owned by Conniford at the moment um, from edge of gutter to the building is 15 feet. So there's still room. You have to remember the right of way is going to include the road, the gutter, and the sidewalk. So even though you're giving a reduction, we're not putting the road right against the building. That's what I want. I wanted that question to clarify. Yeah. The 22 feet measures from where? Just so to clarify. Yep. Yeah, the me. edge of right away. Edge of right away. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Wanted. Which is basically yeah. 35 feet back from the center line of the paved pintail cross. I don't the other... Oh, no. no. <laughs> you get one car in there and then be yeah. done. Um, the other thing I want to just enter into the record is that this project. Uh, has been before the project review committee on several occasions. And there's been negotiations back and forth on the design of this. If you recall, when they first came into the planning board, they had more variances than what they're requesting now. And uh, the redesign is cut down on the number of variances that they need. So it's a difficult site to deal with only because of the difference in the setback requirements that are in the town code or new construction, not necessarily for existing structures that have already been approved and accepted by the state. Now, the other part of it is that, you know, there's, there's really no space left on lot 1A, which is the green lot up there, if I'm correct. Correct, yep. Um, to add anything. So we're not creating a situation here where somebody's going to come in and, and throw another building on top of us. That was what was approved by the state. That was funded by the state. And those are the conditions of approval by the state. So that doesn't change. Yeah, and again, any anything uh, other than the dedication of the road, which, which is not self-created by the applicant, you know, trying right. to work with the town, there is no other variants being requested were under the density of units per acre. Um, we would have no other setbacks, lot coverage variants. We could just go build this if we were going to build it as a private road. Um, so I, I just wanted to, I know I kind of said that, but I just wanted to clarify for the board. Um, I, you know, this project really could, can go forward even if this board were to deny. Uh, I just wouldn't have kind of the benefits that, that I think everybody at the table is. I think you said in the last meeting the highway department doesn't see any issues with snow removal for their basement. No, it's definitely a little bit smaller than their normal road, um, but they don't have a problem. There is a uh, strip of land between the sidewalk and the road. Um, but yes, they don't seem to have an issue with this. And for them, the benefits outweigh the snow removal side of it. Uh, we're, we're definitely concerned about the bridge on Wood Drive and about how there's a lot of density here, uh, not from this project, but just overall from Farmbrook and Running Brook that we really, from a point of egress from Farmbrook, should have another way to move traffic. I think the only other question, the county planning, which doesn't seem to be applicable, the site not located within 500 foot dimension specified, just for clarity, so we know what does that refer to? The general municipal law says that if you have an a, a application for planning or zoning, 
that lies on property within 500 feet of certain uh, facilities, state roads, county roads, municipal boundary lines with villages or towns, uh, distances from state parkland, things of this nature. That's subject to a referral to the county. So when, if I got it right, you're asking for us to acknowledge that in the resolutions that the setback for A, B, and D, D being 40 feet, A being 28 feet, B26, or B26, would be on the record for the resolutions. Is that, am I understanding nope. that correct? So I'd like to put that in the record that we're acknowledging that. We're, we're basically in amending this resolution to include that um, specification for those other structures. Oh, I have to read each resolution. Okay, let's move forward with. Do we have any other questions for them? How about the public? Anyone online? There's nobody online. No one's online. Okay. So we'll close these public hearings. We? We'll move into. Or deliberations and decisions. It, it, there's only one for the next. Yeah. Sorry, there's only two. Yeah, we're just doing the 302 right now. Right. Okay, well, we move on to the next. So, 0303-24. Well, you can take leave these next ones now. They're all related to pintail. So we can block those. You can block those. And, I, and for sake of discussion, just maybe if you will, please, Matt, explain what variances we're talking about there so that they know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll so lock those public hearings together. Sure, great. So the overview of the project obviously remains the same. Um, I think there's a lot of the discrepancy back when we got the original approval. I think there was a chart that said that side and rear setbacks was 30 feet, but the body of the code said 40. We set them all at 31 to be in compliance. Now it's 40, so we're just cleaning those up. So anything that says a rear or a side setback of 31 feet, again, the building's built, we're not changing anything. That's just to make sure we've got kind of everything cleaned up as we go through this. The remaining are all related to either parking uh, in the front yard, which was not a front yard before because we didn't have the road there, a dedicated road there. Um, front setbacks, and that is mostly specific to uh, the community building, which is to the north and east of uh, the new portion of the dedicated road. And then the three buildings immediately south of the bottom of the curve there in the blue, there's three residential buildings, all less than the required 70 feet. And the closest is actually two feet from the building wall to the right of way there. Again, no changes, it's an existing condition. The road's not changing, it is, it, it's staying right where it is. So as you drive the road today versus tomorrow, if they're granted, uh, there'll be no apparent change there. And then uh, a landscaping strip, typically within your code, when you have development immediately adjacent to a roadway, there's a requirement for a 10 foot wide plant and landscape strip or buffer between that parking and a roadway. Again, here not proposing any changes, but that is not able to be accomplished with uh, just the geometry and configuration once we dedicate the right of way. 
I believe that captures all of them that were requested. That counts. No, I I think I've drafted the, the, the resolutions for approval of uh, all of these existing conditions. Um, simply that the applicant didn't create these. These are the result of wanting a public versus a private road, the difference in setback dimensions, and also, as Dan alluded to, the changes in the code from 30 to 40 feet uh, have come into play. Also, again, you have this letter that supports on the planning board on the desires of what the town is looking to do. Public comments? Comments from board members? I do have one question. You said there was a issue concerning the community building. Is that what you said? It's less than 70 feet from the okay. setback, but it's not closer than the two feet, which is the maximum reduced. And I don't think it's as critical to clarify the differences and setbacks for this lot because they're all existing and they're not okay. in any of the building. Okay, office. we're not acting on them. We don't need to act on that. Or it's within what, he, what yeah, Matt said. Yeah. yeah, because we're reducing it in other areas which would allow the community building to be then approved. Okay, I just want to clarify. That's it, and we will go to public hearings for these resolutions. All of the deliberations and the decisions. through the early on was continued. And we need some help with this one. So zero three zero two. Did you actually take action on the draft resolution? For Fowler? For Fowler? Yeah. We did a roll call. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. Mike Fowler? Yeah. yeah. Yep, because when you finish, I didn't close it. I just said we have a resolution in front of us. Continue with. Okay. Right. Right. So, this one will be 0302 24. Okay. Make a motion to waive the reading of the secret resolution and approve the resolution submitted by the town staff. A second. Okay. All in favor? Do we need to amend um, the resolution? Well, that's the secret. Okay. Sorry. Se secret is already part of that resolution Correct. because you did a coordinated review. Your findings identified the fact that you uh, had satisfied secret as the planning board is the lead agency. We, you don't have to do anything separate. Actually, you're prohibited from doing anything separate. So we'll move on for 0302 to the determinations and conditions that I can give you. I'll make a motion to waive the reading of the complete finance decision resolution. Would be the termination condition allowed. We have a second. Second. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? Hearing none. Okay, so the Zoning Board of Appeals, after reviewing the vote by eight, makes the final decision. In this, I have the comments about the setbacks for A and D. Right. You want uh, condition number one to be uh, modified to read the for the construction of buildings A, B, and D and E. Okay. Okay. 
Setback at A is 28 feet. Acknowledge it. Building B, setback at 26 feet. Building D, setback at 40 feet. Is that satisfying? Yeah, I'm sorry, building E was remained at the 22 feet. 25 feet. Yes. Would be the 22 feet. Because you got three feet in the back that you can just move them. Yes. I think I've got that right at there, at the, at the uh, rear setback with that pump out. I think that 42 foot is not tagged to the, uh, that wall there. That's just the right to the, can you see that tag is a little bit back? Right. right on the corner. Yeah, that 22 feet is the uh, minimum. Right there. Yeah, there. But if you got 45 foot setback, that pump out of the building is right on the line. But that's 45 feet. Is that the dimension? It's 43, I think. Yeah, but it's it's not tagged to the rear of the of the building. Is that now. dimension 45 or 43? Or is it 33? My mistake. 21, 22 feet in. I I read that as 45. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, it's swim pretty hard to see it too. How many about it? So we just want to amend it to the 22 from the 25. Okay, so we will amend the resolution from 25 feet to 22 feet from the highway right of way that we go across now for building E. Thank you. I think those numbers are correct. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, I think we're not so. I didn't understand the term five. It didn't work. And as long as the applicant is. Yes. Yeah, it did in my eyes. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have a roll call vote. Kelly? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Todd? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Tom? Aye. Kevin York? Aye. This is approved. Okay, so move on to ZB0303-24. Now you can block all of these because it's the same application and it pertains only to the buildings on lot 1A. Right, I understand. Okay, so... You know, I have the drafts are different. And he's doing the determinations of them which are vary a little bit. Like, like, Each one varies, don't we have to do You can you can do the, the yeah. Yeah, we'll, go do them one at a time real quick. Yeah. One at a time, just read them quick. Yeah. So, okay. So zero three zero three dash twenty four. I'll make a motion to create a reading of the complete findings and decision resolution and read the determination condition. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any other none? Okay. 
His only Board of Appeals, after reviewing the above five proofs, make the following decision. That the benefits of the applicant does outweigh any known detriment to the community or neighborhood, and therefore the requested area variance to maintain the existing village gate with a two foot front setback on the proposed public road until crossing is hereby approved without any further condition. No problem. Hello. Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Or I'll make a motion to waive the reading of the quick findings and decision and resolution and redetermination of the condition. Second. 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 Community or neighborhood, therefore, the requested area variance to maintain the existing building gate with a 31 foot rear yard setback from the proposed property line with the adjacent creek wood extension brick wood management and townhouse project is hereby approved without any further conditions. No call vote. Kelly? Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 It is. We move on to 0305-24. I make a motion to waive the reading of the complete findings and decision resolution and read the determination and condition of all. Okay. Motion by Todd. I'll second. Second by Jody. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Okay. Zoning Board of Appeals, after reviewing the above five proofs, makes the following decision that the benefit to the applicant does outweigh any known detriment to the community or neighborhood, and therefore the requested area variance to allow the side yard setback for building eight of the existing apartment project known as Pinto Crossing Apartments Phase One is hereby approved without further conditions. No problem. Kelly? Aye. Uh, Aye. Jody? Aye. Tom? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll move on to 0306 24. I'll make a motion to waive the reading of the complete findings and decision resolution and read the determination of the initial motion by Todd. Second. I'll second. By Tom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The Zoning Board of Appeals, after reviewing the above five proofs, makes the following decision that the benefit to the applicant does outweigh any more detriment to the community of the neighborhood. And therefore, the requested area variance to allow continued open area parking within the front yard and side yard portions of the existing apartment project known as Intel Crossing Apartments. Phase one is hereby approved without further conditions. Roll call vote. Kelly? Aye. Todd? Aye. Cody? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jimmy? Aye. Approved. Move to 0307 24. I'll make a motion to waive the reading of the findings and decision resolution and read the determination and condition. Motion by Todd. Second by. Second. By Kelly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Zoning Board of Appeals that's reviewing the above five proofs makes the following decision. That the benefit to the applicant does outweigh any known detriment to the community or neighborhood, and therefore the requested area grants to allow continued open air parking within the front yard and inside of the portion of the existing apartments project, known as Pinto Crossing Apartments, Stage One, is hereby approved without further conditions. Roll call vote. Kelly? Aye. 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 Aye.
Okay. You can have it. I can't read it anyway. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. <laughs> Any other board matters? If you have any board matters, um, no, Paula, my name is spelled incorrectly on all this paper. <laughs> I don't know why my last name is such an issue. There's an E on the end of Cochran. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All because of Kelly. How many times have I corrected the spelling of my name? Can you just change your last name? Yeah. <laughs> <It's easier. laughs> Kelly, I understand. Yeah, it's not that good. I understand completely about people screwing up last names. So well, there's old there's your Cochran in your last name. <laughs> there we go. Everybody can't have a good brand name. I can tell you that, right? Yeah, exactly. It might so if you screw it up, you're pretty well. <laughs> Service? Service. Well, we had a meeting today with the contractor for the sidewalk project and uh, went over several things and introduced everybody. Uh, we're waiting for the contract documents to come in. We were told they'd be here today at four and they weren't. So we'll have to just wait till we get them before we can move on. You'll see some action out there pretty quick. The first thing they're going to start on is the uh, bridge crossing of uh, Beaver Creek. There's a lot of site work preparation involved with that. And uh, we still are waiting on the uh, Army and Market Center to come in. I had a uh, email from someone, Mavis Tire wanting to know if their building elevation drawings would be acceptable for the planning work. And I told them that they were a little bit premature on that, but I'm back in a couple of months and maybe we could talk then. They're anxious. I don't know what, what's going on. That's all I have. Maybe this is your tire battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. All right, so we still don't have a zoning officer. Um, you guys have been receiving stuff from Caitlin from my office, who started uh, only uh, a week and a half ago. So she's still very much learning of uh, all the ins and outs. And um, we're working with Paula, trying to get the correct information to you guys. I told you it's going to be a bumpy road. Uh, we'll get through it, but again, just keep working with us. Uh, we'll we'll get back to how it was, um, hopefully sooner than later. And uh, if you feel you're missing something, reach out to me, and we will try to get you what you need. Uh, your next meeting, uh, you did continue continue Fowler to that meeting, so that will be on. And I don't believe I have any other applications. So it should be a much shorter meeting than than I guess. Yeah, we did give them a deadline of April twenty fourth to get that soil information in. So everything that we're requesting, yes, has a deadline to it. Unfortunately, your continuation is dependent of the planning board. And as long as he keeps meeting his deadlines for planning, we can't really... Well, well I, know, I know we're working with you know, as we're keeping the pace moving. And that's hopefully our goal is to get him back to you guys so that you guys can make a decision. 
but uh, the planning board is doing their due diligence um, on the seeker and making sure we have all the correct information on that. So that's where we're at. Anything from the board? As Ed Heminger say would say, Kelly moves to adjourn. <laughs> Jody seconds. All in favor? Aye. He must be in a hurry tonight. <laughs>